Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'd like to talk about GAPS flowers for baking. So this is a very important topic and it's one that can be kind of confusing when you start doing some research on the GAPS diet depending on where you're getting your information from. So in the times past people have used a variety of different alternative flours for baking on GAPS and there are some that you definitely should avoid and then there are worse or better ways to use the ones that are allowed. So let's talk about the options for flowers on GAPS. This book right here, The Complete Cooking Techniques for the GAPS Diet by Monica Corrado, who is a GAPS chef. She's the official GAPS chef and a certified GAPS practitioner, is the most fantastic book on the subject. It's very thorough, very laid out in a way that's easy to understand. So I do highly recommend this book so which gaps flour or you know baking ingredients your body is gonna do well with is a really individual thing. So I can't really say this one flour is the best because it's not necessarily like that for every single person. Some of the best choices for baking on gaps are homemade almond flour. We'll talk about how to make that the very best it can be. Homemade coconut flour can be good and coconut butter or coconut manna. Now some other less than ideal options would be, well there's actually just one of them, store-bought almond flour or almond flour that you make yourself that you don't process very thoroughly. So the problem with nuts and seeds is that even though they're allowed in the more advanced stages of the GAPS diet, they are, not, they're all seeds and seeds want to not be eaten. So they have a lot of... <laughs> So they have a lot of anti-nutrients on them, which makes them have an easier time to survive in the world or in a digestive system as a seed, but it makes them very hard for our body to break it down and digest, which means we miss out on a lot of nutrients. It can be irritating to a damaged gut that's trying to heal, all that kind of stuff. So we want to do some certain things to these flowers to make them easier to digest. When it comes to almond flour, the ideal way is to make it yourself at home. Now you can purchase store-bought almond flour, but it's not the best option. Now you can get big five pound bags of almonds, of almond flour, like at Costco. But think about that for a second. When you grind nuts, or even when they're taken out of their shell, and especially when they're ground, they start to go rancid and oxidize pretty rapidly. So think about those big bags that you can see the contents so it's exposed to light, it's sitting in the store under the fluorescent lights for who knows how long on the shelf, and then you take it home and bake with it, you're not using the best ingredients for your body. Now to make the best almond flour at home, you would buy organic raw almonds. I have a source which I'll link below to where I like to buy these. It can be kind of hard to find them. And then you can either soak or sprout or ferment those almonds and then dry them out and then grind them into flour. Another thing, another way that you can do that is to grind them into flour and then ferment them. But I find it's usually better to soak or sprout or ferment them and then grind them into flour and then you can ferment that flour again as a step in your baking recipe. So that's a good option. When it comes to coconut products, let's talk about store-bought, commercially available coconut flour. That is one that you definitely want to avoid on the GAPS diet, and I would say off the GAPS diet too. Commercially available coconut flour is very high in fiber, which means it's very irritating to a healing gut. Monica Corrado gives the example of sandpaper on a wound. That's kind of what commercial coconut flour does to a leaky gut, it's definitely not something we want to do. So a better option is to make coconut flour yourself. It's not as difficult or complicated as it might sound. The way that you do that, and I'll probably do a video pretty soon if you guys are interested in the step-by-step -step process of this, 
but all you have to do is combine some shredded coconut with some water to make coconut milk, blend that up in your blender, strain the solids out through like a mess strainer and a nut milk bag or some cheesecloth, and then you have a nice homemade coconut milk that you can use in recipes, and the solids left over you can dry as and use as coconut flour. The homemade coconut flour, she says, is silky in texture. It's not fibrous like the commercially available stuff, so that's much nicer on a gut that's healing. Another option, which I have all my stuff out here because I was filming a video on some Gaps cupcakes, which depending on the order, I think by the time you see this video, the cupcake one will already be out. So if that's the case, I'll link it down below. But instead of any of these flowers, it uses coconut butter or coconut manna is another name for it. And that can work really well too because then again, you avoid the processed fibrous coconut flour that's commercially available, but you get the whole coconut. It's just coconut pureed is all coconut manna or coconut butter is. So then that works as the flour portion in the recipe. Another alternative for somebody who just isn't doing well with any of these options is white beans, so navy beans. And in this book, she talks about the process. It's quite a process to properly prepare those so that you can use them in baking and your body won't have such a hard time digesting them. I personally haven't tried it ever, but she says it can be a good option for some people. She does say that it is pretty labor intensive, so you have to really want to be eating a baked good to go through all that work to make the bean, the white navy beans into a flour substitute. And then that, for me, would pose the question, why would somebody be wanting a baked good that badly? You'd probably want to look into what's going on in the gut as far as yeasts, possibly heavy metals, but that's another subject for another day. Anyway, this is the selection of GAPS flours that are available for baking. Those are my recommendations to recap. The very best is going to be some properly prepared homemade almond flour that you ferment. Homemade coconut flour from shredded coconut can be a good option too. And then the coconut manna or coconut butter is a really easy option too that you can make something like these cupcakes with. You definitely want to avoid store-bought coconut flour, commercial coconut flour. And it's best, I mean, you can use it in a pinch if you really have to, but your body is gonna be a lot better off if you avoid commercially prepared almond flour and make it yourself at home. And then there's the white beans as an option too for some people who might do the best with that. So I hope that you found that helpful. If you have any questions, leave them below. Be sure and check out that description box for sources for where I like to buy a lot of different ingredients for making GAPS food, as well as just nourishing recipes in general. Also check out that description box for free ebooks and other goodies. Also leave me a comment and let me know what videos would you like me to make. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would like to see it and would find it helpful. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.